Today we're going to talk about 10 logical proofs. Prove the existence of the root consciousness, the Laya consciousness, the storehouse. Why do we want to prove it? Because its existence proves that we have reincarnation and if we can turn the deluded consciousness into wisdom, we will all become enlightened and reach Buddhahood. Therefore, the existence of this deluded mind is very important. Now we're going to look at 10 logical proofs based on the teaching of Buddha. Number one, repository consciousness that holds seeds. First of all, there must be a repository of all our seeds. We call it impression or karmic energy of our past wholesome and unwholesome thoughts. All our thoughts, our action, our speech, they are stored as karmic seeds, bija. These bijas, they must be stored somewhere. So they are stored in this alaya consciousness. And when the time is right, they will ripen into result. That's our retribution that we are experiencing in our lives. So we must have a repository storing all the bijas. This is to show you that our good thoughts and bad thoughts are cumulative until they ripen into result. How do we know our thoughts are cumulative? For example, if you go on a seven day meditation retreat, the first, the second day, you have a scattered mind and you cannot be still in your meditation. But the third day or the fourth day, you start getting better. And by the seventh day, you become good at the meditation. Our good effort of meditation is stored in this repository consciousness as seeds. Our meditative skill is improving as we keep practicing to show you that karma is real and all our thoughts are cumulative. Therefore, we have to work on purifying our thoughts to become wholesome and to let go of our unwholesome thoughts. Number two, there's a ripening consciousness manifesting karmic retributions. So the first one is the causal ground. The second one is the effect. So these seeds, they will manifest into retributions. If we have unwholesome thoughts, they will ripen into negative karma, into sickness, into disasters. All these are karmic retributions. And good thoughts and good deeds, these seeds will ripen into your retribution. If you're pretty, that means you have offered a lot of flour to Buddha. And if you are rich, that means you are very generous in your prayer and this lifetime. And if you're very healthy, that means you have always been compassionate and took care of others. All these are retribution. Now we are in the retribution of the human realm. That's our seeds ripening into resolve as a human. But as a human, everybody has different karmic results. Some are healthy, some are sick, some are rich, some are poor because our alaya consciousness is different. So this ripening consciousness is different. Number three is the subject taking rebirth in the three realms. We must have a subject that is reincarnating lifetime after lifetime. We call it the three realms. The realm of desire, the realm of form, and the realm of no form. So we are in the six realms of reincarnation. The lower realms are hell, hungry ghosts, animal realm, and the higher realms are human, asura, and then it's heavenly being. Usually we call it the five destinies because the asura realm do not have their own place. So who is taking us through lifetimes and lifetimes of reincarnation? There must be a subject that is doing this because our body would die. So it must be this eighth consciousness, the fundamental consciousness, the subject that is taking rebirth lifetime after lifetime. By understanding the Laya consciousness, you will believe in karma, you will believe in reincarnation, 
and your belief and condition arising. So who is taking us? It's this aligned consciousness. Number four, possessing reception. First five consciousness are eye consciousness, ear, nose, tongue, body. They are sense organs. Of course, they have the thinking mind, the sixth consciousness. But who is holding them together? It's actually this aligned consciousness. It has the capability of receiving the external environment into our senses. So we can receive these stimulants. So who is the subject that is doing that? It has to be this alaya consciousness, the storehouse consciousness, the repository that is holding our body together and holding our sense faculties in place so we can receive and experience the world. Without the eight consciousness, we cannot do that. Some people might think hey, we don't need it because we have the thinking mind, our brain. Our sixth consciousness is doing all these. But the sex consciousness, it cannot hold seeds because it's not neutral. It has good thoughts and bad thoughts and it's constantly changing. We need a stable consciousness that is neutral in order to hold seeds of the faculties and to sustain life. So it has to be the eight consciousness and not the sex consciousness, the thinking mind. Number five, there is a consciousness that is mutual support of life, warmth, and consciousness. In order for a sentient being to stay alive, it must have three things united together. It must have life, longevity, warmth, and it must have a consciousness. Who is this consciousness holding this life form? It must be the eight consciousness because your sixth consciousness it does rest sometimes. For example, when you are in deep sleep without dreams, you don't have any thought. So who is holding this body together? The sixth consciousness is not working during those times, but our heart will keep beating, our breathing will keep going. Who is sustaining this life? It must be because we still have years left in this lifetime and we also have warmth in our body and we have a consciousness that is sustaining the continuity of life. So this consciousness has to be the alaya consciousness and not just the sixth consciousness, our thinking brain. Number six, my at the time of death. Oh, at the time of our death, there are actually three states of our mind. One is the my that is clear and sharp. When people are about to go, even though they're really sick, at the end, they will have a period of time, they're very clear and very sharp in their mental awareness. That's the time we should start chanting and praying and help them to have virtuous thoughts. So they will be taking rebirth in the good realms or the Western Pure Land of Amitabha. So that's the first mind at the time of death. The second mind is when the mind is in the state of confusion and dimness. Now it's getting dimmer, body is deteriorating and our, our sense faculties is not working so well and the whole clarity of our mind is dimming. That is when we're losing our sixth consciousness. So at that time, it's harder. The third state of mind is when we are unconscious. So the sixth consciousness stops working. Now, who is holding this light? We're not dead yet. We're still breathing, but the mind is not working. Your eyes, ears, nose, nothing is working. We're still breathing. We're still having heartbeat. Who is doing that? It has to be the alaya consciousness. At the time of death, that's why we chant Amitabha, eight hours, because the consciousness is still there. Even when the heart are beating and the breathing stops, we still have the liar consciousness. And then when the consciousness leaves, then it will go into bardo, which is the intermediate life. 
for 49 days our karma is being determined we will be taking rebirth in this 49 days to the next lifetime all because we still have the continuous consciousness of the eight consciousness the storehouse number seven interdependent of name and form and consciousness this is dependent origination there are 12 links of dependent origination the first one is because we're ignorant we don't know where the buddha nature we think we have a self then we have volitional formation because of our ignorance we produce karma then we will have a consciousness when the parents are copulating your consciousness will attach onto the egg and the sperm who is this consciousness it has to be the liar because it's not the sixth consciousness it is not the first five consciousness because they, they haven't been formed the fourth link is called name and form when the mind is not fully developed we call it the name when the body is not fully developed we call it the form so basically it's the embryo who is carrying us in this embryo it has to be this alive consciousness therefore buddhists we do not believe in abortion because when the parent copulate it's the alive consciousness it's already a sentient being this is telling us reincarnation is real and it's because we have this deluded consciousness we can be awakened from this alive consciousness knowing it's a illusory nature karma is because we are deluded we think this is a real life that's why we keep reincarnating in the six realms if we can wake up and we can leave reincarnation be in alignment with our true nature our true suchness then we have no more reincarnation will become a buddha number eight there is a consciousness as the nature of nutriment of consciousness as food as a sentient being we have four kinds of food the first food is edible food that's what we intake through our mouth the second type of food is called contact food that's when you contact with pleasurable feelings you see kids they love to play sometimes they forget to eat they're having so much fun playing they don't need to have edible food so that's called the contact food the third type of food mental volition when you have inspiration hope motivation you will keep on living all these three can be because of our first six consciousness getting nourishment from edible food our pleasurable feelings or from our thoughts when a person has no hope it's hard for them to stay alive number four is consciousness as food some people they lost all their hope okay they're not eating they are not having pleasure contact food and they're not having hope and aspiration how do they keep going for example hell beans they have no edible food and they have no contact food and they have no aspiration what makes a hell being keep living it's because we have the alive consciousness it holds the life together the wind blows it's alive and it keeps going through the suffering of hell so this is telling us the nature of nutriment to have consciousness as food number nine existence of consciousness in cessation concentration the third level or hardship you are a saint you have let go of the self and some of your affliction of the self and you go into this deep meditation uh, where you let go of all your thoughts and all your feelings but you're still a human so this type of saint if they have no thoughts and no feelings what is sustaining this life it must be the light of consciousness without it these saints in their body would perish because they have no thoughts and no feeling in that meditation they can be in that samadhi for days and weeks what's keeping their body alive that is telling us saints they still have a light of consciousness 
Number 10, there must be a consciousness that is making us defiled and pure. When the mind is defiled, sentient beings are defiled. When the mind is pure, the sentient beings are pure. There must be a neutral consciousness being permeated with seeds. Sometimes they are defiled, sometimes they are purified. How do we judge if this person is a saint or a mundane? It's not by how the sixth consciousness is thinking is wholesome or unwholesome right now because that is temporary. The sixth consciousness, the thoughts are constantly changing. Sometimes you have good thoughts, you are saying, and sometimes you're having evil thoughts, then you're mundane. So how do we judge? We have to know there must be a liar consciousness that has seeds when we really transform the seeds, we get rid of all the bad seeds, the looted seeds, the defiled seeds, that's what determines if this person has been transformed from a mundane to a saint. From that, we know for sure there must be a liar consciousness determining whether we are still defiled or we have turned into an Arhat or a Buddha. There must be a criteria. So the key of understanding these 10 proofs is to change our thoughts and change our karma. From this, we understand there is really karma and there is the consciousness continuing the karma. A lifetime after lifetime of reincarnation. This lifetime as a human it's a very short period of time in the samsara. Now we have a chance by understanding the 10 proofs. We understand we're using the deluded alaya consciousness. What we need to do is to purify this consciousness and wake up from the dream state. At the time of death, go to Western Pure Land and leave reincarnation once and for all. We can get rid of all our attachment to the ego, attachment to all worldly existence, then we transform into a Buddha. So this is to tell you, reincarnation is real if you keep using the Alaya consciousness. There was a king has a beautiful mirror. This mirror it reflects everything very, very clearly. One day, the mirror became very dirty and everybody thought it was broken. The king wants to throw it away, but a sage came and told him, my king, this mirror is not broken. It's only because it's dirty. We just need to clean off the dirt. Then it can reflect everything clearly without having any attachment. What does this mean? The mirror, when it's clean, it's our true nature. When the mirror is dirty, that's when we're using the alaya consciousness. So the sage is our wisdom, our wisdom of non-conceptualization. Only when we stop using the conceptualized mind to judge and to live this life, can we turn the deluded consciousness into wisdom. We call this wisdom the great perfect mere wisdom. That's when your alaya consciousness is purified, the true suchness is revealed. So you are the clear perfect mirror. You just have to wake up from this dream. Hope that bring you some kind of insight into reincarnation and your existence. So that's the class of today. Thank you so much for listening. Amitabha.